Hello, hello, hello. You're very welcome along to Ireland M on Virgin Media 1. It is Tuesday the 6th of September. It is. We've got lots coming up on the show today from Tinder to the dangers of deep fakes. We'll be explaining what those are. Uh, that's all happening between now and 10 a.m. Now, the horrific Tala murders have sent shockwaves right across the nation. We're very shortly, we're going to be speaking to the principal of St. Aidan's Community School in Tala, which has been a source of support for the community. Of course, he was the principal of Lisa and we're also going to be speaking to a clinical psychologist because this is something that there are children going to be grieving and dealing with this and of course with Jack de Bromhead as well and how do you talk to your children about these terrible terrible That's situations. That's all coming up in just a little while. Also later on we'll be finding out exactly what deep fakes are and how dangerous they could be for everyone because everyone could be targeted for this. Uh, also on the show we're going to be meeting the Irish woman who flew 7,000 miles for a Tinder date and now has a baby with her match. It's a lovely story. They're gorgeous. Um, Alan, what else is coming up? Well, we're in Ireland's favourite chanteuse. Camille O'Sullivan will be here to discuss her new show, which uh, scored rave reviews at the Edinburgh Festival and, of course, at Electric Picnic. So looking forward to chatting to her a little later on. And Derek is in Wicklow this morning finding out about a special costume exhibit. Good morning, Derek. Good morning, Al. Al, you just missed a bucket of rain that fell down here in County Wicklow a few minutes ago. And in fact, plenty of rain once again out there today, feeding up across the country with some heavy rain and a continued risk of flooding. But guys, you're going to love what we have for you this morning because we're down here at Rusper House in the Garden County and we're off to check out the Irish Film and TV Costume Exhibition. So think Daniel J. Lewis in the name of the father, think Brendan Gleeson in Michael Collins and who knows where and we might even find one of your costumes one of your outfits in the archives. <laughs> we'll catch you later on. Uh, thank you very much, Derek. Look forward to catching up with you a little bit later. But now let's get over to the Virgin Media News Hub. Here's Cleona Russell. Thanks, Tommy. Good morning. A 24-year-old man has appeared in court charged with the murders of his three siblings, eight-year-old twins, Chelsea and Christy Cawley, and 18-year-old Lisa Cash. Andy Cash appeared before a special sitting of Dublin District Court last night and has been remanded in custody. Our news correspondent, Zara King, has more. A 24-year-old man has appeared in court charged with the murder of his three siblings, eight-year-old twins Christy and Chelsea Cawley and 18-year-old Lisa Cash. Andy Cash, with an address at 25 Rossfield Avenue in Brookfield in Talla, replied no comment to all three charges of murder at Talla Gartha Station last night. Gartha Robert Whitty gave evidence of arrest, charge and caution at a late-night sitting of Dublin District Court uh, last night. Andy Cash, as the solicitor, has requested that his client receive a full psychological psychological assessment. He's also requested that his client be placed in solitary confinement, but Judge Patricia McNamara said that was a decision for the prison governor. Uh, there was no application for bail made and Andy Cash has been granted uh, free legal aid. He has been remanded to Clover Hill to appear before court again on Friday morning at 10 a.m. Sarah King reporting there. Liz Truss will officially be appointed as Britain's new Prime Minister today, becoming the third woman to take the post. She's expected to announce her full cabinet this evening. A day of formalities lie ahead for Liz Truss. The newly elected Conservative Party leader travels to Balmoral Castle in Scotland today, where she will formally be appointed as Britain's new Prime Minister by the country's Queen Elizabeth II. The Conservatives' 20th leader in two centuries, she'll also be its fourth in six years. Her meeting with the Queen will follow Boris Johnson's, who must travel to Balmoral too, to officially tender his resignation. One of Liz Truss's first tasks will be the naming of her cabinet. Formalities over, Liz Truss faces significant challenges, not least of which is the growing cost of living and energy crisis in the UK. Marie Mulcahy, Virgin Media News. In Canada, one of the two suspects in a mass stabbing has been found dead. Two brothers stabbed 28 people in the attacks on Sunday morning, killing at least 10. The body of one of the suspects, Damien Sanderson, was found in the community of James Smith Cree Nation, the scene of the first attacks. But his brother, Miles Sanderson, is still on the run. The deceased is Damien Sanderson. His body was located outdoors in a heavily grassed area in proximity to a house that was being examined. 
We can confirm he has visible injuries. These injuries are not believed to be self-inflicted at this point. Students in Uvalde in Texas are due to return to school today for the first time since a mass shooting at their school in May. An attacker shot dead 19 students and two adults after entering Robb Elementary School, after which the police response was widely criticised. The return has been delayed by a month as officials carried out safety checks and installed non-scalable fencing and security cameras. For car insurance, van insurance, or home insurance, call the Quote Devil. Unless, of course, you've got money to burn. Thank you, Anne-Marie. And a very good morning to you at home, or if you're indeed streaming online on the player, we're coming to you live here from the beautiful Rossborough House down here in County Wicklow. We're off to check out the Irish Film and TV Costume Exhibition, so we'll have our first hit in and around 7.45, so do hang with us for that. Anyway, let's take an opening look at weather together now this Tuesday morning with Mark Armstrong on cameras. It certainly was a day for the ducks yesterday. They'll certainly be splashing around out there once again today because we've plenty of showers out there this morning, hitting at many parts of Monday into uh, into Galway City, Eastern Galway, and in fact parts of uh, Wexford, Wicklow, and into South County Dublin, not escaping either. Now drier and brighter elsewhere with those moderate to fresh south easterly winds taking us right across the day. Now as we feed our way into this afternoon, in fact more of the wet stuff hitting at uh, rain continuing to track up across the island, bringing with it some heavy spills. Again, we're going to see some isolated thunderstorm activity with that ongoing risk of spot flooding. So if you're on the roads, take her nice and handy out there today. Top temps very similar to yesterday at 16 to 20 degrees. Finally then tonight again more showers crisscrossing the island. They're going to lean once again on the slightly heavier side especially across southern sections. They'll be getting a little bit of a trouncing over the last few days. Again it's going to be uh, a wet one as uh, we work our way then into tomorrow morning. More showers on the cars with values back to 12 to 15 degrees. So that's how it's shaping up for now here in County Wicklow. It's a bit of a wet one. we got to get back live at 7.35. For first-time drivers, young drivers, returning drivers, if you've had an open claim or have had too many penalty points. The quote devil's always got one hell of a quote. Coming up after the break, we'll be taking a look at the stories dominating all of the front pages. Ireland AM is back in a few minutes. It's time now to take a look at this morning's papers. We'll start with the Irish Times. It's headline, new plan to control and cut energy use in office buildings. The paper reports that government is drawing up a new energy plan which could see the temperatures in offices and buildings lowered this winter. Their front page also shows a picture of Andy Cash, the man charged with murdering three of his siblings. Give cheap loans for electric cars to cut emissions, watchdog urges. That's the front page of the Irish Independent. It's been advised that low-cost loans to buy electric vehicles, congestion charges for urban drivers and more public transport fare reductions must be introduced to start turning greenhouse gas trends around. The Examiner also leads with energy saving measures with the headline heating to be lowered in public offices. It also shows a picture of two young friends supporting one another at a memorial to Lisa Cash, Christie and Chelsea Cawley after Andy Cash was charged with their murders. And most of the tabloids are leading with the news that Andy Cash, the brother of the three siblings killed in Tala, has been charged with their murders. The mirror goes with brother charged with triple murder. The Sun also goes with that story, a sibling's murder charge. And the star leads with triple murder charge. While the Herald's front page charged with siblings' murders. And finally, windfall tax of energy firms to ease burden is the top story of the Daily Mail. It says the government is poised to raise revenue from firms making millions in profits while households struggle with price hikes. Now, of course, dominated by what's happened in Thailand. We will be speaking that, about that in just a moment. But Liz Truss has been announced as the UK's next Prime Minister. But what could her appointment mean for us, the Northern yeah. Ireland Protocol? There's a lot of ramifications. And joining us this morning is News Talk's uh, Anton Savage. Good morning to you, Anton. Yeah. But first, former political editor of the Irish Times, Philip Webster, joins us. Good morning to you, Philip. How are you? Um, uh, it's just, sorry, the Times. Um, not the landslide victory some were predicting, but she is the new Prime Minister. What does it, we were just saying, what does it mean for Ireland and what does it mean for the Northern Ireland Protocol? Well, last night, uh, interestingly, allies close to trusts were trying to talk down quite a bit of the, uh, the roar, the deafening roar they'd been over the... Um, 
over the Northern Ireland Protocol during the campaign. There was, she was saying during the campaign that she'd have no uh, compunction about uh, tr triggering Article 16 um, and, and possibly scrapping the protocol altogether. Now, last night, allies were telling us that, well, actually, she's going to carry on negotiating. And I think with everything else that's happening in the UK at the moment, the last thing Trust needs is a potential trade war with the EU. So she's clearly going to have one more go at uh, negotiating. We're waiting to see who the uh, Northern Ireland secretary is. It's one of the jobs that there's still quite a bit of doubt about. Um, it's possible that it'll be um, Connor Burns, who has the Minister of State role at the moment, or it could be uh, someone else. But uh, clearly, the the attitude from the start is going to be, let's have another, let's have another try. And I think she is going to have an early uh, chat with the Taoiseach anyway about this. So there, there seemed to be a deliberate downplaying of tension on this particular subject yesterday. Well, of course, with the UK facing surging inflation, potential recession, a record squeeze on living standards, the highest in 40, over 40 years, she's got a lot going on at home and often it has worked for UK Prime Ministers to start pointing at the EU to kind of be like, it's their fault, don't look over here, look over there. Um, so with all of this happening at home, how are people feeling about that? And how is the country feeling about her being the next prime minister, well, no, they're not. Uh, they're not over the moon about it by any means. Um, there was a poll last night suggesting that um, you know most people would prefer Boris Johnson to be there, and only fourteen percent, I think, thought she'd make a, a good prime minister. So it was. A, it, it's very underwhelming uh, in terms of how the country reacts, and uh, the vote, the conservative vote itself, was definitely not as wide as the polls had predicted. And it does suggest that uh, there was even doubt in the Conservative ranks, Conservative membership ranks, as the contest went on. Uh, as you mentioned, bashing the EU, anything EU is a good way of winning a few votes with Conservative Party members. But it's not, uh, it's not that pub popular with the public at large, particularly if it means getting into another battle with the EU over over trade. And it, to be totally honest, the UK cannot afford that at the moment. It's about to spend a vast sum, I think, on uh, shoring up or freezing electricity bills and sure, shoring up the companies that supply our energy. So um, it's it, it, she's got huge spending on her plate as well as cutting taxes. So yeah. does she really want a battle with the EU? And, I don't think so. And Philip, obviously today she's going to announce her cabinet and lots of people saying that she's just going to surround herself with allies and friends to get her through the next two years because there is so much on her in tray at the moment. And of course, Rishi Sunak ruled himself out yesterday. So do you think that is exactly what she's going to do? Or is she going to try and open it up to a wider um, array of cabinet members of the party? Well, up until yesterday lunchtime, it looked very much like a cabinet of friends and allies. And I think uh, the majority of her new cabinet, particularly those at the top, will be her friends and allies. As we know, there was a rather um, not, not, not a very um, fulfilling uh, site during the election campaign where a lot of people who had backed Sunak went across to Truss in the hope of... Uh, possibly getting a job. Some of them may, may succeed, others won't. And it's quite possible that those who don't get a job will very quickly find they're no longer allies of trust and, uh, and go to the back benches and, and let's see. I think overnight she may well have been thinking, I've got to broaden this cabinet a bit. Uh, there was a suggestion um, late last night that Penny Mordaunt, who's from the uh, Liberal wing of the party, could now be leader of the House of Commons rather than uh, Ian Duncan Smith, who is uh, from the right. If, if there had been a few changes along those lines in her thinking, that's, that's because of the, yesterday's vote being less convincing than everybody thought. Well, it'll be interesting to see how the real-life Game of Thrones and the Conservative Party plays out. Philip Webster, former political editor of The Times, thank you so much for joining us this morning.
Um, Anton, of course, we were just talking about Liz Truss there, which we will be talking about, I'm sure, for a long time to come. But the news that is, of course, dominating, um, that is the Tala stabbings, three family members murdered and someone has been charged. Yes, their older brother is the, the person who's been charged. Without wishing to go through all of the, the detail of it again, because it is so harrowing, yeah. we know that the uh, two twins, two eight-year-old twins, um, Chelsea and Christy, and their older sister, 18-year-old uh, Lisa Cash, they were murdered Saturday night into Sunday morning. It is, it's rare that you see um, Gardaí talking about bereavement counselling and counselling services being made available to the members of the mm. force who were on the scene. That gives an indication of how horrific this killing is. He was charged before a special sitting of the district court last night, um, has been remanded without bail because bail isn't possible through that court, so he's definitely having to go to jail. Interestingly, his solicitor requested, or his, his brief requested, that he be held in solitary confinement. And he is obviously at this point a suspect in the case, but anybody suspected of such a, a brutal yeah. murder, one would imagine would have a very difficult time in jail. So we assume that's why the request for solitary confinement. But as the judge said, that's a matter for the prison governor yeah. rather than yeah. for her. So we'll see what happens. And it is under sub judice, which is the guards and, and everyone's trying to say, stop with the social media commenting because this Correct. could affect the case. And it has to be said very clearly, the man who has been arrested is innocent until proven guilty. Yes. He is a suspect in the case and mm. justice has to run out and it's one of those things that we've seen it before if you if you cast your mind back I think a year or a year and a half um, there was an instance where a man was arrested for a crime social media went bananas naming him and threatening him and then it was discovered he was entirely innocent yeah. so stay off Twitter stay off Instagram don't make any comment and just let the Absolutely. system do what it does uh, and, and but he has they have asked that he go for psychological assessment also so yes. that, that, that is something. Look, we, we're going to move on. And another story, the, the Enoch Burke. Tell yeah. us who this man is <laughs> and why he is in contempt of court. OK, Enoch Burke, and uh, there's, uh, excuse me if I don't get every tiny little specific detail right, but let me paint a rough picture <laughs> Where to you. Like... <laughs> Enoch Burke is a teacher in a school. Enoch Burke went in and the principal said one day, we have a student who is transitioning from male to female. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Therefore, that student wants to be uh, given, wants to use plural pronouns or the uh, name to which she is transitioning. Enoch Burke said, no. I'm not going to do that. I will continue to dead name the uh, child oh, to use that term. Did he give a reason why he wanted to say no? Uh, his evangelical and Christian beliefs, mm -hmm. may, he says, are why effectively he won't he, do what he believes right. to be a false act. Fine. At this point, the school does what the school would do, which is say, well, OK, you're now into a, a difficult situation with us. We're going to do a disciplinary procedure and we're going to spend you on full pay until we get to the end of this and see where it full goes. Full pay. On. Yeah, full pay, yeah. Full mm -hmm. pay. So... <laughs> At that point, if you're at the school, you think, well, Enoch's now going to go home yep. and we'll deal with this through the process. That's why God gave us HR. Yep. Next morning, Enoch comes into work and says, lads, we've had this discussion, you're not meant to be here. Yep. He says, I'm not going home. One thing leads to another and it all gets a bit aggressive. The school goes to the high What does he do to the principal? I think there was some shouting involved. And some chasing? Maybe a little. Yep. So <laughs> he, the school then goes to the high court and the high court goes, yeah, that all looks fine to me. Uh, he needs to stay home and says, yes. Enoch, stay home. Enoch comes back into work the next morning, yeah. which puts him in breach of a high court order. Now, if ever you want to find your way into prison yeah. really quickly, don't break a window, don't punch a guard, get into breach of a high court order, because that gets you into jail right quick. And that's what's happened. The high court says he is now in contempt of a high court order. Mountjoy. And to, 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 to really re to kind of drive this point home. They didn't want to do this. They were like, you don't, you don't, you don't, you, have, to. You don't just, have to. Just, no, just stay at home. Just stay at home. Yeah. Stay at home. Stay at home. Stay one second, because this is, a lot of people are making this about this poor child. But this is a fella who was told by his principal, then the board of management, then everything else. And then he just said, nope, I don't follow the rules. Correct. I do what I want to do. The law? Oh, that's not for me. Because this, this is the law, right? Can I just say that this is one of the great things. I, I, the, the, nothing has put me in better form in the last day than the way that the Irish media has treated this. Because there are so many other jurisdictions when this would become a culture war thing about yep. the position that he took in respect of the child. The coverage in this has been extremely accurate, which is we can argue about whether or not he was right on this at a later date. He's not going to jail because of that. He's going to jail because the High Court said, stay home, Enoch. Yes. And he said no. no. This is not. Yeah. Like, what a daft reason to end up For in jail. For anyone oh. who went to NUIG, you will know the, the Burke family. They, they have been 
in, before courts before, to say the least. Uh, so that is going to rumble on, no doubt. Can we talk about something completely and utterly different, something that I have used as my little... Oh, my bra get my is brain. This, Let's pretend that the world worry, is Don't worry, darling, place. the movie. Oh, Venice Film Festival. There is a movie that is causing more controversy. Can you remember Mr. and Mrs. Smith? When oh, it came yes. out and it was Brad Pitt and yeah. Angelina Jolie and, and Jennifer Aniston and we were all gossiping about people's actual lives. Now it's happening with Don't Worry Darling and I know you're dying to talk about this, Anton. There are a number of people in, of <laughs> whom I've never heard. <laughs> don't do this. You know who Harry Styles is. So you know who Harry Styles is. I'll give you Harry Styles. You, Harry Styles. Harry Styles. you don't know who Chris Pine, Gemma Chan, you don't know who no. Olivia... You don't know. The, Pugh. the Pew woman I had an emotion. So I, I've... She's going to win Oscars left, right and centre. Well, that's grand. Me not knowing who she is won't right. <laughs> impact right. on her Oscar campaign. So, this woman, Florence, was in a movie with Harry Styles and this other woman who I didn't know, who was directed by a woman who was Harry Styles' ex-girlfriend. She went to the Gaiety School of Acting, her grandfather's Irish. There was a fight involving Shia LaBeouf, I don't quite understand, but he got fired. Now, Florence is sulking at the director woman, who I don't know who she is, and won't go to the premiere, but she says her flight was delayed. How'd I do? You did all right, because there's a bigger thing here. It's about, <laughs> it's about incels trying to take this movie down, because it's it is a movie incels. about... It's always the incels, that. because it is against... Uh, against uh, it's got a feminist... It's getting great trick. publicity for this movie, though. It which isn't getting though. great reviews. No, the, the reviews are only one click up from Blackbird. Yeah. <laughs> 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 the not, not the TV not program, not the movie. Not the TV program, no. uh, So this is some drama that has been going on. They all looked fabulous at the premiere they and for Harry a world Styles where everything is so amazing. serious. Totally. There is amazing. some other news. There is. This and is from the Venice Film Festival. This is actual good news. This yes. is good news. Right. Yes. There is a man who I do know called Martin McDonough oh, because yes. he is a gifted playwright and uh, theatre screenwriter. I swear to God, you need it. So is Olivia Wilde. Anyway, go on. So um, uh, he has nothing to do with Harry Styles and no. has never dated him. Martin McDonough wrote uh, In Bruges and no, as well yeah. as a number of other things um, but he wrote In Bruges and of course In Bruges starred Colin Farrell and Brendan Gleeson and was a fabulous piece yes. of work. Well, all three of them have reunited and the film in which they have reunited, which is... The, the Banshees, Banshees of Inishirin. Thank you very much. <laughs> it has just been screened at the Venice Film Festival and Colin Farrell received a 12 and a half minute yes. standing ovation. Now, the Venice Film Festival goers didn't lick it off the rocks. They know a good film when they see it. Yes. So if he's getting the guts of 13 minutes of a standing ovation, I would be betting we're going to see good things out of this movie. Can you imagine standing there for 30 minutes? Wouldn't you be mortified yeah. with this? You just for 30... keep going, no, like, go on, you're grand. Hold on, Anton loves it. Oh, no, no, please. Tommy's enjoying it as well. He's like that. So that is good news uh, it's for great the news. movie. Yeah. And, and it's nice to and see. And it is great to see people where they're... Because if you look at the range of talent and also it seems to be the range of decency yes. because by all accounts yeah. Colin Farrell is a lovely fella Brent Gleeson is a lovely fella and so is Martin McDonough so fair play to you. Lovely and Anton, Anton, thank you from Newstalk thank you so much for joining us Now, the tragic murders of three young people in Tala on Sunday has absolutely rocked the nation and dominated headlines since. We're joined now by clinical psychologist Dr David Coleman and Kevin Shortall, who is the principal of St. Aidan's Saint Aidan's Community School. Uh, thank you so much for joining us, Kevin, because obviously Lisa Cash, who is one of the murder victims, was in your school up until last year. So how is everyone do? I actually can't even imagine how the school is right now. How are you all? And in the same way that you can't imagine, I suppose we can't put our finger on how everyone is. We just have to be aware that things are different, things have changed. And um, there's going to be all sorts of things to deal with and to think about and to face and to, to acknowledge and to, to try and comprehend over the next little while. And at times like this, a school really needs to get its A game together. And I, I think all schools get their A game together week in, week out day in, day out, year in, year out. But when something like this happens, you, you just have, have to add that little bit extra or that, that significant amount extra. So that's what we're, we're doing at the moment. And, um, and that's why we're having these conversations. We want people to know that, that that's what we will do, that's what we do do, and that's what we will continue to do. And there's a solid, tough foundation and place for people to be and people to come. And the routine mm. is, is important right now and the contact is important and the conversations are important and the, the, the human kindness is important. In our school, the, the um, motto of our school is, speaks about strength and caring. And it's not about physical strength, it's about knowing that uh, strong people care about other people yeah. and mind and look after each other. And this, it says it in the name of the school, St. Aidan's Community School. Yeah. It is a very close-knit community which 
has rocked, it's rocked the country, but I couldn't even imagine what it's like. So as somebody who leads that school, for you, what's the important message you're trying to put out to teachers, to families, to kids mm. who are coming to terms with something they could never possibly dream of? Yeah, there's a there's a kind of a weight of responsibility in a way, but, um, you know, it's not anyone's particular tragedy. It's everyone's tragedy. And whatever you're feeling today, it's true for you. Mm. And uh, it's a dangerous statement to say, oh, I shouldn't be upset because I have nothing to worry about compared to other people. If you're upset, you're upset. And that's important. And, you, you know, there were, there were people who were worried about things last week before this happened. Yeah. And they can't be sidelined at the moment either. So we just have to comprehend everything at the moment. Um, and, you know, our, our school is, is, as you said, Tommy, a truly community school. It's our tragedy, we feel it. We have 20, more than 20 staff who went to the school, who, who grew up in the community, teachers, SNAs, office staff, and they're really feeling it right now. We, we need to be there for them. And yeah. um, that's, that's what we're at right now. Um, and there's no, there are, there are certain playbooks and there are certain things we know to be right and the things we do, but yeah. you know, let's, let's change if we need to, let's move if we need to. Um, but I, I have to say, um, the, the, the genuine goodness of people is really coming out now, it, locally and nationally. Which is wonderful to hear because I think everyone is kind of looking on the outside in at ye and how you're handling this at the minute because, David, there is no training for something like this. And we're talking about children who have access to social media, who, who know what's happened. They're in secondary school. So in relation to this, and I know that, that loads of us can't possibly imagine it we've never been close to a tragedy like this but how do you speak to children and teenagers about something like this that is that has ripped a community apart yeah, good morning um i think it, it's it, the, the first and most important thing perhaps when uh, you're talking to your own child or or uh, your children is to just try to establish what is it that they already know as you say you know there are so many different sources of information you know a, a tragedy like this i think because it's so shocking and um, so noteworthy, you know, there's a lot of also media, you know, kind of spotlight on it as well. And so it's quite likely if you have a child in school that they've come across this because, again, it involves children and it involves children and and, um, and how schools now are reacting to it. So it's quite likely that your child has some information. And what you probably now want to establish is how much information do they have? And is that information correct? Because that will then allow you to know, well, what might it be that they're feeling in response to to whatever it is that they know. So maybe they're feeling frightened, maybe they're feeling just desperately upset, maybe they're feeling shocked. And and so a bit like Kevin was saying, I mean, there's no you know, particular response that any child needs to have. There's no feeling that they may or may not necessarily have. And it's about trying to explore though, how do they feel? And, and you get there by ultimately listening to them, but you'll probably want to start the conversation certainly by just checking in about what they actually know. How do you broach a subject? Because this is obviously a violent death around these three siblings. And I suppose it's different for age groups, obviously. But as a parent, I mean, where do you even go with this? How do you open up the conversation? And how much do you expose them to what has actually happened? Well, I think the key bit there, as you've identified, is it'll depend a little bit on the age of your child. Uh, if they're a teenager, you can be quite, um, I would say, straightforward in terms of checking in very clearly going. So you've probably heard about what happened in Tala uh, over the weekend and uh, that family. And I just want to check with you, you know, what do you what do you understand or what, what do you know about that? Um, as a child gets, you know, younger in age, um, if you've got younger children prior primary school, maybe eight, nine, ten, the ages of, of the children to the children involved, you might be saying something like, so perhaps you've heard that something bad happened uh, in, in Dublin, depending on where you are in the country or in Tala, if you're already in Dublin, um, over the weekend. And I'm just wondering, what do you know about that? And if they say, oh, no, I didn't hear anything, then you can say, oh, that's good. Uh, I'm glad you didn't hear anything. But there was a, a, a bad thing that happened and it was kind of upsetting for people. And I just wanted to check whether you might be upset as well. But if you haven't heard about it then it's fine 
Um, if it's the case that they have heard about it, then, as I say, you're trying to establish gently what it is that they know. And then it may be that you do need to add some information, particularly, you know, if they've heard all sorts of things, you know, that there were shootings or that there were, you know, depending on what information they have, you might need to just clarify it and check it and and give them some, some actual facts. But it really, you know, if your children are very young, then you just hope that this has gone over their head. So if they're three, four, five, six, you know, with a bit of luck, they may not even be aware of it. So I guess you're going to have to just be a little bit attuned to your own children. And, and if there's a sense that they're really out of form in a way that they weren't before the weekend, maybe that's the indication that something is on their mind and maybe this is the something that's on their mind. There can be, you know, so many different forms of grief, you know, not even something like this for children that it's important to be there for. But with you, Kevin, I suppose, like going forward, will you have psychological help for the children in school? Because again, we're talking about teenagers who have so much information to yeah. hand. Yeah, we, we, we have people in from, first of all, we have our own internal pastoral care team and yeah. they work year round, day in, day out. We have psychologists from NEPS on site at the moment. And again, they're sitting and working and tailoring the response depending on the given day. So sometimes there's a need for physical movement. Sometimes there's a need for a quiet time. Sometimes there's a need to just do nothing but get on with things. And it depends on the person, depends on the age, depends on the situation. And we'll just have to keep reacting. And, and as time passes, you'll do different things. And you know, there might be something that we need to address in six months time. And that's true too. Um, uh, schools are used to that. Yeah. Um, not like this. But um, you just do what you do a little bit more, a little bit more differently. Yes, I think you've said everything that we, we are expecting from you. I think you've been amazing over the last couple of days, Kevin, and, and, and talk about such a tragic event that's happened and shocked the community in St. Aidan's. Thank you so much for coming in. And I know you have to go into Hold school in this morning I'm as well yeah. and, and try to navigate through another day. Um, so thank you so much for joining us this morning, Kevin Shortall, and of course, Thanks David Coleman, me. clinical psychologist. Uh, great to have you with us this morning. Uh, OK, lots more Ireland um, coming up after this short break. Uh, this morning, Derek is in County Wicklow for a special TV and film exhibit. Lights, cameras, action! Where you go, Derek? Uh, <laughs> there we go, Tommy. I'm coming out of the rain for just a few moments and what a setting here in Rossborough House in County Wicklow for the Irish Film and TV Costume Exhibition. And the lady co-curating it all is Virla. Virla, you've been in the game a long, long time. Yes, for more years than I care to remember, as they say. <laughs> and welcome to this side of the camera. <laughs> yes, it's a new experience. <laughs> it is. Thank now, you very much. first up, we're heading back to 1992, The Crying Game. What have we got? Yeah, this is um, a piece worn by Jay Davison for his character Dill, designed by uh, award-winning costume designer Sandy Powell. Um, the beautiful sequence dress she spotted in a Covent Garden shop and was kind of a eureka moment, I believe, for her that she just thought, this is the piece for How the How many sequences have we got there? Haven't counted, but feel free. <laughs> Could be a competition. There's a lot there. Now, <laughs> yeah. 1993, of course, a famous film, In the Name of the Father, directed by Jim yeah. Sheridan. Yeah, this is a wonderful piece we have from the Joan Bergen collection. Um, when she was designing this piece, she employed Donnelly's leathers in Harcourt Street, and they imported these skins uh, especially for the piece. Again, it was uh, the money piece, as she says. She spent quite a amount of her budget on these two coats were made originally. And it was a fantastic scene for the homecoming of Daniel Day-Lewis to his Belfast home streets. And all and the, the kids, kids following him down the around, street. Very much the prodigal son. A and yeah. of course, Joan, Joan Bergen's synonymous with Irish design as well, isn't oh, she? Oh, absolutely. She's, she's been working even longer than me. <laughs> and we can't talk about Joan without talking about the Tudors, of course. Uh, um, some of her greatest work, really. Absolutely. Absolutely. She won three Emmys over the years for, for her costume work on the Tudors. And these particular costumes is a wedding outfit worn by Henry and Jane Seymour, played by Jonathan Rhys Myers and Annabelle Wallace. This point in the story, Henry had massed quite a lot of wealth and Joan wanted to illustrate that by using the cream satins and the gold embroideries and antique lace. I was going to say very opulent, very isn't it? Very opulent, very bright. It was like a new start for Henry. 
And that was directed by Kieran Donnelly. And That's finally, right. we're on to the favourite 2018. Of course, this was nominated for uh, seven uh, BAFTAs. It was up for many Oscars uh, as well. Seven Oscars. I don't know how many Oscars. Yeah, did I think the ten. Yeah. Yeah, but Olivia Colman won an Oscar for it, and Sandy Powell again, and nominated for one as designer. Mm, yeah, that's right. Talk us through the costumes. So, what's really interesting about Sandy's work in this piece is her use of colour and fabrics. Like she limited her colour palette, as you can see, to kind of black and white. But uh, she knew that there was no artificial light being used during the filming. And that kind of contrast was very important, but also um, the sheen on the glazed cottons. Okay, and, and the white would have bounced on here. That's exactly. a material there, that's muslin, is it? It's muslin, and then the, the African glazed cottons she used, which, uh, like I said, like, you, know, uh, you can see the shine off them reflecting. Oh, how yeah. much is this collection worth? Oh, <laughs> I haven't done the math. <laughs> priceless. The, in, the insurance is expensive. <laughs> <laughs> there you go, so guys, a priceless collection. We'll have more from Rusper House here in County Wicklow in the next year. We're lining up Michael Collins and the normal people. Come back to a step. Beautiful. Oh, Derek, beautiful. we'll be back with you in Limerick very shortly. Limerick? Yeah. Limerick? Did Rust I say Limerick? Rust you did. Rust Wicklow. Obsessed with it. There Obsessed with the place. <laughs> yeah. and we'll be back with Derek in Wicklow to see more from the uh, Irish Costume Archive project a little bit later yes. on. Yeah, now still to come, we're going to have advice for parents on how to boost your child's immune system. Plus, singing storyteller Camilo Sullivan joins us to chat about her most intimate show yet. Ireland AM will be back in just a few minutes. Tuesday's Ireland AM on the way. We'll be meeting the Irish woman who flew 7,000 miles for a Tinder date. Fair play, Ter. That incredible. Fair play. Uh, also, we're going to be finding out about the rise in deep fake technology. What is it? And should we be concerned about it? To be fair, there are some of these videos online that are hilarious. You were but there's, there's some involving rugby players. Too. Oh, I love it, yeah. But you're we'll not in them. We'll, be, we'll be having a look at them in just a little while. Alan, what else is coming up? Well, Mirren, from sellout shows in the Sydney Opera House to the Edinburgh International Festival, Queen of the Fringe, Camilo Sullivan, is back with a brand new show, and we're going to be finding out more about that in a few minutes' time. And Derek is in County Wicklow this morning. How are you getting on, Derek? Al, all we're missing is the fire going here <laughs> because it's a bit of a chilly start here down in Rusper House. Plenty of shares out there today as well, tracking up across the country. Uh, you, we had the exhibition earlier on. We had our first taster of it, uh, the Irish Film and TV Expo. We're going to be heading upstairs and we'll have more for you on that in and around quarter to nine. Tommy, am I in Wexford or Limerick? Where am I? <laughs> Ashford's all the same, Derek. We'll we'll give him a little, Where am I, Tommy? We'll give him a little test. We'll yeah. give him a little test I'm, I'm on sitting Thursday. beside Miss Limerick, Limerick here, you see. It's just, it's in the brain. Yeah, we had a lot of Limerick people on the show yesterday. Um, and we have been talking about the Talat murders, and we'd just like to say to Margaret Cash McDonough, whose picture is on the front of so many papers mm. this morning, just her heartbreak, grief. I, I don't know how she's doing, and I, I know that she's got the community around her, and we hope she's doing okay. Um, and people and are thinking of her this big morning. Big time. We had Kevin Shortall on just recently there, just talking about how to deal with this as the as a community mm. school. That and, and he was amazed to see how the community is coming together, but. Uh, to talk, how do you talk to your kids about it? And Bernie just said, thank you so much for covering and talking uh, about how do you talk to your children about grief and death. My 10-year-old has been asking questions about the tragic deaths in Tala. I just want to make sure I'm using the right words. I don't want to frighten him, but I know if I don't give him the, any information, he's going to look elsewhere and I'm afraid of what he might find. Mm. Um, and that's, that's so yeah, scary. You have, because to, you really... have to open up and talk, because children are going parent, to ask questions. As yeah. a parent, you don't know. I mean, we're not yeah. guided about what the right words to say. And, you know, say the wrong thing yeah. could frighten yeah and we were speaking to clinical psychologist David Coleman about that you can watch it on plus one and you'll be able to find it on the player because he what was, was he talking saying? about the words that we should be that you have to be honest with them because yeah. there's information from everywhere and you have to find out the information that they know first and then you go from there but that not to baby children if they do know things and not to frighten them with some words because colloquialisms can you know you're like if you say granny went to sleep that maybe children might be afraid about going to sleep oh, do you know that sort of way so it's open it's, up I the mean, conversation yeah. just did and, you hear like, what happened in Tala, there's, you know, there's going to be 10 and 12 year olds in that community going to school and they're, they're all going to be talking about it seven, among themselves. Eight, seven, eight or nine year olds. Yeah, yeah. Uh, absolutely. Listen, um, thank you so much for the texts that have come in and we'll hopefully read a few more of them as the morning goes on. Now, her performance, uh, performances are considered emotional and dramatic. We're going to be chatting with singer Camille O'Sullivan after the break. 
thanks for staying with us. Now, Camille O'Sullivan has been described as a chameleon performer adored by fans for her dramatic versions of songs by the likes of Bowie, Radiohead and Coldplay. She's also just the best laugh. But before we <laughs> chat to Camille, <laughs> let's take a look at her in action. Oh, my God. <laughs> Children, wake up. Hold your mistake up before summer it turns to rust oh, 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 oh. I might be a murder if I don't have a chat. Oh, that's Sorry, a we're just chatting away. Camille O'Sullivan, good morning to you. How are you? I'm delighted to see you. I was saying, it like, I love watching you and I feel like I've climbed into the television <laughs> going, here they are. We Hello. love having you here. Thank we you really so do. Much. We have to do the shoes. Can we do the shoes? Oh, Can we get it out of the way? The Wizard of Oz shoes. Look at them. Can we get a close-up of this? Because we've been, everyone's been, look at look those. Look at that. Yellow brick road, the dress and the, I know. It's a, it's a certain age, guys, I've realised, like I was saying to you, I got this from John Storrs and stuff. I used to like wearing <laughs> black, but actually I've realised I want to grow old oh, gracefully. Colour. And it just keeps people looking down here and looking here and less around here. And... <laughs> that's my motto as well, Camille. Grow old disgracefully. Oh, I love it. it. Yeah. I love it. You're just, you've just done EP. Yes. How was it? Were it you lashed out of it? I, well, I wasn't. <laughs> I maybe lashed out in a different way. But, not <laughs> but basically, I uh, no, it was amazing. And um, I, uh, it was just so... Like, Irish audiences are incredible anyway. But I think it's been... Uh, kind of a, I was saying recently when we were doing shows, I'm excited back and I'm nervous. Yeah. Because you've been in the kitchen with your cat, your cat is like, would you get out of the house? You know, it's been too long. And then you're seeing faces again and the lovely little faces on them. Like, it's terrible because the inclination is to hug them through song, yeah. but you also want to hug them. Yeah. So I was kind of climbing down and like we were, t you know, people were giving you drinks and things and, um, <laughs> you know, touching hands and it, but it was wonderful and we were all up for it. Because they've been so, waiting for two years yeah. as well for it. And so your nerves yeah. dissipates into just complete joy and stuff like that. So um, it went quickly and it was, it, a lot, and also festivals are so bonkers because you're yeah. dealing with uh, the thing next door and I was talking a little about them and so it's kind of, I can't, I, usually I can't remember what I've done by the end of the, uh, the hour and then I'm at 4 a.m. with my Irish repressed thing and oh my God. What did I do? What did I, did I do? do? Did, I, did I do it right? Yeah. Was I good? Oh, that's <laughs> terrible, but that is how you, that's awful. But it Why do we all way. do it? What I did know. I say? What did I say? I oh God, what did I, I say? I think it must be a very Irish thing. And everyone does it you know? and we think that they don't. But you, you are then just off, like EP, great, yeah. rain, having a bit of crack. Yeah. 30 days at the Edinburgh Fringe. 30, like, sh like, not I am right. I would performing. say in about four hours' time, I'm going to be like that in my house because this is my first kind of day off come, kind of going to happen. Yeah, I mean, we started there in 2004 and I think it's been maybe my 17th year or something mm -hmm. with time off. And it's like a pregnancy. You go, I'm never doing, doing that, that again. And then, you're back. and then you're back going, hi. How's it going? <laughs> and I said to the audience, I, like I said, there's 20 voices in my head, and there's usually a woman called Margaret. And I'm not too sure if she's enjoying the show. Like you know, I'm always trying. To, that's been going on for years. Like you know, Margaret, it'll be grand. And by the end of the show, her partner John is going. She has no issues. She's grand. This one's bonkers. So I have this. I, I mean, my friend said to me because the posters are always enigmatic and not, like a little bit like propaganda to get people in. <laughs> But, you know, you do a really good photo shoot. And then what this show was about was I went, OK, I've got this amazing dress. It looks cool. How am I going to get out of that dress? Because I want to be more me and authentic. So it, 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 Edinburgh was used as a testing thing. And it, some of the songs are very sad and some of them are very rocky. And it just, my friend said, why don't you just show you a bit more? And I said, well, that's dangerous. I'm from Cork. I have to try and not talk between songs. And actually, I'm more nervous about talking between songs because at least a song, you can become something yeah. else. Yes. And that's what I love doing is becoming different characters. And it just became a bit funny. Like, I didn't mean to be, but people said, it's like comedy. Like, what's going on? Like, you, like that? <laughs> you went so into I the was, court. No, I was just going, I very quickly had this red dress going, well, this was my, you know, it's all very sophisticated. This is like my drunken purchases during Amazon, during COVID. <laughs> and uh, it 
it's just like showing, it was like, the, this is what this was about too. Yeah. So they're on stage around me and the hula hoop and stuff. So it's things that happened. To you, George, this is your new show, Dreaming. Yeah. Yes. So where, where you start off, as we see you there, the beautiful dress, dress doing dress, your yeah. thing. And then you kind of deconstruct it and you become yeah. you. Oh yeah, totally. And they all think it's going one way. Like you're looking at a kind of television set singing with a, like all the mad stuff. I had to buy a TV off some fellow up the hill in Edinburgh the day and like it works. I thought, I don't care. I'm taking the inside out and putting lights in it to yeah. look at me. And um, basically pretty soon I'm just going, and just telling them, look, nothing fits anymore. I've got the tightest pants in the universe. <laughs> and and I'm wearing clothes, like not these shoes, I'm wearing the, another Dunn store has purchased. Dunn's <laughs> getting great plugs hey, today. Sorry, <laughs> sorry, sorry about that, my mother's There's favorite other, job. other good shops <laughs> out I there. Ever, if I ever lose my mum in any town in Ireland, I know where to Dunn's. find her. Gotcha. So, so basically, the shoes are falling off. Like the soles are coming off, the tights are coming down. Like I, I have a thing about wearing really not great outfits on stage that they're falling apart. The idea is at this stage of my life, it's unraveling and the show is called Dreaming, but it really should be called the wheels are coming off and I haven't a clue what's going on, on and I never did. <laughs> so very quickly, the audience are like, yeah. <laughs> Love it, yes. Do Margaret, it's not that bad. Wait, oh, Mar good old Margaret. Margaret's there going, going, yeah. Do you th what I'm fascinated by with you is the appearance versus the reality because I when know. I first saw you live and it was this ethereal, yeah. um, very chanteuse yeah, thing yeah. going on and then I met you. I know. And I was like, sure, you're just the best crack ever. You're, uh, you know, Bonkers. you're all over. But you're great. Yeah. Like, so much That's fun. That's the trouble with the blooming posters, like, <laughs> looking like it and trying to still look, look like it because you're like, you know. I, I think they I've get that from loved... you when they meet you, that, that it's like, oh, my God, the yeah. performer and the person. Well, they do. Well, my all my friends don't really know. Like, they all go, who's that person on stage? But the thing is, it is you on stage mm. because you're, sh the idea behind the show is, you can laugh, you can cry and go to... Actually, it's about vulnerability and I don't mean to make that sound, like, stupid, but it's, like, I'm I'm quite emotional. Maybe that's the Irish and the French thing together. And I think the French... and Because my mum always says, I wish you were more enigmatic like me and not talk so much like daddy. <laughs> and I'm like... Oh, okay. <laughs> so I have that look um, that I think has been useful. And I love the old Ava Gardner and all oh, the... You yes. know, I love that yeah. look. Yeah. yeah. So I think at the start, definitely, and I've always loved to start the shows that way, but as... I've got older, I realise I'm like, you know, everything's going south, so have some fun. You know what I would mean? You in go the sense, way like, out of that. I would like, I was joking. South. No, but it is because I've got it all well tucked in today, <laughs> I can tell you. But basically, I was joking with Fergal, who was playing piano with me, because it's usually the band, and we just brought Fergal, who was amazing. And um, we, I was joking, I hope to be in a nursing home, like with the pink hair and doing the hoop. And then her, Fergal would be like, how did I end up in the same nursing home? What were the odds? <laughs> <laughs> As you're, you know, it's going, that's great, Camille. Did Could they, they like the show? They like it? And the last time you were on with us, we did we did have a... You were I hula know. hooping around. I can't around. believe... I, and that was one of my things coming off going, I can't believe I did that. And and we sort of said, well, how could we top it? So we have something here. Oh, stop. <laughs> Don't joke. do it, Derek. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're doing... You're doing the, the Olympia Theatre. Yeah, on Saturday, the 26th of November, yeah. with the brand new show. Yes. Dreaming, where people yeah. can just see you... Just be your the lockdown and the anti the post lockdown yeah, version hoping, of you. And I'm hoping, like the thing is, what a lot of people said. I mean, the Olympia is one of my, you know, three Olympia is one Absolutely. of my favorite places mm. to perform ever. And like that was, that still, you know, coming home is the yes. is actually the most important thing in a way, and the most and, and not nerve wracking, but it means so much. Uh, and also because they're like you're Irish, you you know, you can kind of use that charm abroad, but they're like, come on now, <laughs> you know. Yeah. And um, basically. The whole idea was just to be real, and and I and I, you know I explained in Edinburgh sometimes as me from where I'm Cork in the village, when I'm nervous I joke and I said so you have to understand we go to these sad places but it's that's the reason it's not a fakery it's no, yeah. you know and it is the way we handle things mm, yeah um, so I can't wait to go there because I think I. I think I want to make it be really intimate at the start and then somehow bring the band in to let that explode because the rock side of it and letting go. Though I did say to somebody the other day, I love I love the notion of maybe becoming my own support act and pretending to be like 90 years old <laughs> and then doing the... <laughs> Margaret. Go, who was, who was that Margaret person? Margaret in the front row. Who was that person? <laughs> so, and just the joy... I mean, one of the biggest joys, actually, and I know this sounds, you know... Uh, <clears throat> I don't know, like, when you... Going back was seeing people I knew 
over the years who were coming to the gigs and just having the best time hanging out. Like I love the chat after the show. Yeah. And you meet up with people and there was people I wanted to know how they were because I hadn't seen them, you know, and just seeing the little faces like you'd be halfway through a song, like a song, not a sad one, like a happy one. You're like, oh, my God, and going over for the hug. So, you know, right. no, but could you feel like half. you're related to I, I do think maybe I am like I remember some German guys who they come to the show every year and they said, you're getting, you're, it's always so moving and emotional and you're getting more bonkers and we love it. <laughs> what, what does Aiden think? Does he think you're getting more bonkers? Uh, he does, yeah. <laughs> I think he might have been one of the people who saw that poster first and went, hmm, and I was like, oh, no. <laughs> And he went, uh-oh. <laughs> but we're still together after all this He's time. outside. He is outside. He's been shy. Um, Stop, they tried to bully him to come in. I was like, leave the man alone. No, he did. They didn't, uh, no, he was very good. Like, he offered to bring me to work. So I thought, oh, brilliant. Okay, brilliant. You know? So, um, but no, I'm, I, I think it's so lovely. Um, actually, I don't know if it was like, what it was like for you coming back. I mean, you were working probably all the time. We worked really through keep it, the yeah. Whole thing. Yeah. So for me, I'd forgotten I was a singer uh, and not that that mattered because it was, the world was in yeah, chaos and people were going through terrible stuff. But... I didn't know if I could go back because, really? because well, you know, when you're climbing the horse and you're like, oh, my God, you, you get through it because you're touring all the time. Yeah. And then you're like, you see the audience, you're like, yeah. so the only way to get back was actually go, well, come back like you're just sitting across with them and be real. And because you can't, in my head, I thought you can't come back like you did before because people have gone through stuff. Yeah. So that's what the idea is, just to be not... Because, you know, Aidan says, don't go on about the bloody two years, you yeah. know, don't drive them yeah. mad. But the notion is that we've all gone through something. You hula hoop on stage, which you learned your no, life. No, and I did amazing. bring it into the act. Though I got it wrong on the first night, I thought I'd do it with a red dress. I hadn't practised this. And I was doing a really <laughs> slow Radiohead song, and that was going really quickly. And so I'm so, always trying for a risk, you know. So dreaming in the Three Olympia in November. What date, November? Uh, 26th. 26. I think it's 26. either Friday or Saturday. Tw and it's I'm Saturday so... the 26th We'll of all November. be there. I see the, the hula shoes. Hoop. That'll yeah. be a night out. <laughs> you That's just a good night out. Make life happier. It is a pleasure oh, listen, to have you and Camila so Sullivan. Lovely. Thank you so I much. I can't believe I'm here. I'm delighted. <laughs> I just love, <laughs> love chatting. We here. love having you here. Thank you Thank so you. much. We'll talk Thank to you again. Oh, did you know the costumes from some of the most famous film productions shot right here in Ireland are on display in County. Wicklow. Wicklow. He got it wrong earlier on. Derek is there for us this morning. Hello, Derek. He got it right. He got it right, Derek. Got it. He got it right, finally. Tommy, we're in Wicklow. Anyway, come here. We had the likes of the Tudors and the Favourite earlier on in the 8 o'clock hour. Now we're going forward a little bit in time. Uh, Vera is back with us, co-curator here of the exhibition. 1996 Michael Collins and quite a historical costume, Vera. Absolutely. This is the costume worn by Liam Neeson as Michael Collins. Um, and kind of coincides now this exhibition with the anniversary in Bay on the Blaw, which is lovely to have it here. Um, this costume was designed by Sandy Powell, and it's a great example of how costume sometimes has to replicate history, and there's a lot of research done to make it as accurate as possible. And there's a lot of detail here in this costume great as well, detail, isn't there? Yeah, like the buttons, I believe, were cast from an original uh, button from a military coat of the time. The wool is sourced from a company that's been manufacturing military kind of heavyweight wool for as long as as long as it's been military costume. So it would be very similar to the original. And the boots as well. And the boots were probably made. Um, I'm not quite sure of their origin. Um, this is part of a private collection. Um, so we're very lucky to have it on loan for this exhibition. And this was worn by Liam Neeson, That's who's right. actually quite a tall man. Michael Collins, I believe, was about 5'10". I believe he was a bit shorter, yeah. So Liam is a good bit taller than that. And this costume always looks quite statuesque. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's certainly is, um, it certainly is taking pride of place here yeah. in the room. Now, moving on next to the guard. 2011. This is in fact a dressing robe. It is. It's a dressing gown, gown from the guard, uh, designed by Emer Nivoyle Downig. Um, Brendan is a fantastic supporter of the archive and always speaks so beautifully about the costume process and what happens in with the collaboration with designers and f in the fitting room with the first costumes. Uh, he actually opened the exhibition for us here as well, which was lovely. And, Ger and uh, he played uh, Jerry Boyle, of course, in the guard as That's well. That's right, yeah, yeah, yeah. So Talk us through the material in this. So this is kind of a very ornate, elaborate fabric and is a massive contrast to his uniform, obviously, but shows his character, his other, his flamboyant side, maybe, you know? 
Um, and, and great detail in the design too, isn't totally. it? Totally, it's a beautiful fabric. I believe it was made by Gillian Carew, a master tailor we have here in costume. Yeah. Okay, and finally we're moving on to normal people. Normal people, such a huge hit, wasn't Massive it? Massive hit during COVID. I think everybody just kind of um, enjoyed watching the show so much. And for the steamy scenes. Uh, <laughs> can't speak for everyone. <laughs> but we were certainly not much else going on at that time. Okay, we had Paul Meskel and, of course, Daisy, Daisy Edgar, Edgar Jones. Edgar Jones, yeah. Um, so this is the first time we've been able to exhibit from the normal people, so it's a fantastic opportunity and looks so beautiful in the house. Um, what's significant, about, suppose, about these costumes is uh, the vintage costume that was uh, sourced for Daisy Edgar Jones. Beautiful kind of coral crepe and I believe Lorna Mugan added the little black belt as a little nod to Chanel and to show uh, the passion the character had for clothing and vintage. And Lorna is from the North, from she Belfast, is. I believe. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's she's right. From, yeah, I, I'm just surprised we don't have the shorts here. I know, <laughs> I believe shorts. he ran away with the shorts. <laughs> he ran away with the yeah, shorts. Yeah, the shorts are with him. <laughs> well, Virla, thank you so much for joining us here this morning. How long is the exhibition up and running until? It's running till mid-October. Um, it's part of the house tour as well, so lots of tickets available still. Okay, lots yeah. of tickets available. Yeah. And of course, you can take in the house as take well while you're here. the house and the beautiful surroundings. And the cafe and have a yeah. Yeah. Tea, so you could spend it all day yeah. here. So there you have it. I'm still on the lookout for those shorts. Where that Tommy pair of O'Neill shorts? What do you think? <laughs> Back to you guys in the studio. I'm going to find out. I've got Thank a pair at home. Much. I'm going to send them, and he can do the whole show in the shorts tomorrow. I just think it would have been great if they just panned down there. We and he had them on in the, the shorts. shorts. We should get him uh, a we Connell's missed a chain, trick on that one. and we'll get him the shorts, and we'll see how he does tomorrow. They'll be fabulous. Uh, a lot of text in about Camille there. Camille I mean, Sullivan. Just, yeah, she's, she's she's chatting class, to again. Yeah. Uh, just love Camille. Seen a lot of her gigs and her collaborations with Jacket and May. Yeah. yeah, she's just like... Oh, she's, she brightens up any yeah. morning. Well, Especially with her, with her shoes. shoes. Yes, so many people wanting to know where Camille uh, bought her shoes. And I used to work in the shop that sold them. They're, called, they're from a brand called Irregular Choice, if you're wondering. Irregular. Irregular. Okay. Irregular She choice. had Judy Garland. She had Wizard of Oz shoes on that looked amazing. Yeah. Click the heels and all, together. <laughs> all, the, all the shoes kind of look like that. So if you're looking for them... Anyone who works in shoe, you know what I'm talking about. Now, this all the, Harry. Well, we're just talking about Harry. <laughs> fill, you fill yeah, us in like, on this. I have no Mirren idea. Is, with this. Mirren Mirren has this movie, all the gossip about this. There's this movie called Don't Worry, Darling. It is directed by Olivia Wilde. Olivia Wilde is also the director of Book Smart, and she's been the OC. Her, her grandfather is a famous journalist. She went to the Gay School of Acting, right? Are we up to date? There we go. She was married to Jason Sudeikis. Jason Sudeikis Love plays him. Ted Lasso. Ted Lasso yeah. They have Very two funny. children together. She started directing this movie called Don't Worry, Darling. Shia LaBeouf, who has a tempestuous past, was originally cast. He left the production. Harry Styles came on. Next thing, Olivia and Harry Styles start going out with each other. So she had an affair with We know. Oh. They said, we don't know when the marriage was over. So oh. we don't know. So the marriage was apparently over already. So you These can't call two, it an affair. No, absolutely not. These two start <laughs> seeing each other. And now where we're at is they're doing the pro promotion for Don't Worry Darling, which is based on this sort of a world where, you know, um, women are seen as less than a property of men. And um, it seems like everyone hates each other because Florence Pugh, that's the only promotion she's going to do for the movie Should we save all. this for another programme? No, I'm just saying, yeah. So, <laughs> Which one is Florence Pugh there? She's now? there in the black dress. Oh, so black basically dress. last is night, there's Florence. There? Basically oh. last night, none of them looked at each other. But they all wouldn't she, talk to each other. Didn't she do a video or something? Was there a... Olivia did a video when she tried to get Shia LaBeouf to stay on board and she was like, please, I want you to stay. Please don't leave the so production. she slagged off. No, she said maybe we'll talk. Maybe we'll have some um, a change of uh, um, change of mind from Miss Flo. Is all she said. Okay, wasn't that bad? She called her Miss Flo. So lads, the drama, the drama of it last night has been amazing. And Orla, and Orla says, I have to be honest, I'm loving all the drama around the Harry Styles movie. Sounds like there'd be um, a better film from behind the scenes. And the movie's rubbish. I agree. Well, it's not getting great reviews. We can't say it's rubbish. <laughs> it's, it's not getting good reviews. But Harry Styles looked class did, yeah. on that carpet. They all look class. No. Oh, the drama. <laughs> look it up. It's amazing. <laughs> now, we've got advice to boost your child's immune system and improve their gut health. It's all about knowing about celebrities, the apparently. Drama. I'm joking. Uh, that's coming up next. <laughs>
Now, with the kids back to school, immune systems are going to take a hit. We've seen it already. But did you know supporting your child's gut health can make a big difference? Clinical nutritionist Ava Hill Hamansel is here with advice on how to boost your child's gut health. Thank you so much for joining us, Ava. It's lovely Thank to you have you here. Me. So, with all this, how do we maintain a healthy immune system for a child? Well, um, current research um, by Vivio Junior, uh, it's an innovative uh, children's product, showed that many parents are very worried about it and also showed that 46% of the parents have said that their children are fussy eaters. And yes. a lot of them don't know what's the gut health have to do with the immune system, right? The digestive health is not just about you know, digesting your food and being able to, you know, move things along and, and, and get the nutrients, but it's also housing 70% of your immune system. Okay, so, so gut health is huge for children, it's not just adults. Mm. The children, this is a massive thing, particularly, as we said, going back to school, going back to creches, mm. there's so many flus and viruses going about. So is it a case of a good balanced diet or are you saying that they should take kind of supplements on top of that? Well, it very depends on the individual, but uh, a good balanced diet is the base of everything. And a good gut health is based on a good balanced diet, a variety of plant foods and proteins that we are eating and all the colours in the foods. But when it's a bit more stressful for the child and a bit more of the virus is going on, it's mm. a really good idea, especially if the child is fussy eater, to introduce some supplements to make sure that we're bridging those gaps, that they're not deficient. So they're not getting their vitamins, for instance, and exactly. they're not eating enough of their vegetables and stuff. Yes, very and much so. I know from this research, like, as you said, 46% of parents describe their children as fussy eaters, but 67% are most concerned about their immune system, right? Yeah. So this is... Obviously, you pick up so much. Like, have you already? Like, are they already getting oh, stuff from school? It's just a runny nose constantly. Yeah. Because if we don't know about our own systems, which we don't, how are we expected to know about our children? Mm -hmm. So, when it comes to fussy eaters, like, is there a way, like, with lunch boxes and everything, to be like, okay, what is right? What should I be giving them every day? Mm. What is um, very important is not to force children, but make them interested in it. And it's very interesting that most children who are fussy eater tend to have a bad digestive system as well. And when you're into Produce live bacteria supplements and nutrients that are needed to make digestive enzymes, they bit by bit become more interested in foods. So we can't, you know, forget that you need the nutrients to digest and you need these live bacteria to help you to process all your foods. And then the fussy eaters won't be as fussy eaters. But the more colourful it is and the more varied it is, uh, I suppose, Everybody, for us adults as well, it's really important. The fibre, the, the vibrant colours, a lot of, of these vegetables and, and a lot of kind of finger foods that children like to mm. experiment it's with. Yogurt, is yo I see of yogurt, some fruit yes. and yogurt. It's quite now, important. When it comes to the fruit, they're quite high in sugar, so it's mm -hmm. always need to be balanced out with proteins and fats. And Greek yogurt is probably the best thing. Okay. Natural Greek yogurt. I just mix it with a bit of uh, vanilla extract and yeah, a little bit of honey. Kids won't be eating natural Greek yogurt. Would they? No, but if you dip some, some fruit into it and you sweeten it with honey, with a bit of vanilla, mm -hmm. then you make it a bit more natural, a bit more immune supportive that way. You know how honey is such a yeah. good uh, yeah. traditional so, remedy. And then, so the good food here, and then you have, because my daughter, she's five, she loves when I give her like a little multivitamin. Mm. Um, and I'm a two year old, kind of have to sneak it to the older one because the two year old's not allowed them. She thinks it's a sweet disaster. <laughs> um, but, so uh, multivitamins, are they good for the gut health or is there something else that sh children should be getting? Well, uh, for gut health sp specifically, um, multivitamins are kind of working in synergy with, the, the, with your bacteria. Okay. For your gut health, you really need live bacteria supplements. But those live bacteria then help you to absorb more of your, of your vitamins and minerals from your food and from your supplements as well. Okay. You said that it's kind of tricky to get it into them. So this is where the Vivio Junior range comes into the picture uh -huh. because they're really nice tasting. So children love it. Uh, and they're all natural. You want 
want something that you safely can give from one year onwards, uh -huh. like these ones, or the live bacteria supplements from birth onwards. And these are in sachet form, so they don't taste at all. It's just a powder. From birth. Put that over. From birth. You can mix it into breast milk or, or, or bottle milk. There's good evidence on it uh, that is helping oh, that the digestive. Young. Yeah, that's actually the first two years of life when it's most important to support their immune okay. system. And just stick it in their porridge just or their cereal. Just stick it in their porridge when it's cool enough to eat. It's like very something to easily... do with the dog. <laughs> I was just about to... <laughs> <laughs> very easily mixed yeah. into the orange juice as well. So very, very easy to get it into them. Or their little yogurts that they take. Simple, it, simple as that. And um, is this clinically, like, is this clinically what you recommend? Because I wouldn't, like, I know I'm not a parent, but why, I wouldn't have had a clue from that young age mm. that you have to sort out the gut in that sort of a way. The diet and the gut health is really important in the first thousand days of life. Wow, so it's really okay. the Why? mothers. Why not? Because just... we set up our uh, digestive, our immune and our nervous system at that age. It's, it's developing rapidly together. And the metabolic output from these live bacteria are affecting how the digestive immune and the nervous system is set so up. So if you haven't done it in the first, say, two years, Mm -hmm. Is it too late to catch up? I'm only doing it now. <laughs> never, never too late. I mean, things can happen later in life as well. Like they remove your appendix, antibiotics and so on. It's really important that we replenish it. And for adults as well, the Biocultrange is a brilliant, diverse probiotic um, that we can do. And if somebody is suffering a lot of uh, colds and flus, just naturally supporting the immune system, say with the Vivimune, which is the natural uh, uh, blueberry mm. and elderberry honey type of tonic. So it's excellent okay, uh, uh, range. Oh, yeah. Let's get it moving. I thought it was bad enough for me, never mind the kids. <laughs> uh, listen, nutritionist Eva Hill Hamilton, thank you so much for thank joining us this morning. Really Thanks interesting. For so much. And now it's over to Alano. 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 Now, coming up, how do you know when you found the one? Well, one Irish girl flew 7,000 miles to be with her Tinder match. We're going to be hearing their story very shortly. Plus, deep fake videos are growing at an alarming rate. But are they harmless fun or do they have a more sinister side? We're going to find out in the next hour. We'll see you in a few minutes. Welcome back to the final hour of Ireland AM. Now, finding love in the digital age. <laughs> have you managed to do it? <laughs> yes, let Ooh. us know. We're going to be hearing the incredible story of one Irish woman's happily ever after mode with her and her Hawaii, Hawaii Tinder match. Look at that. 7,000 miles for a first date. Unbelievable. I mean, come on. Now, deep fake videos. Have you heard of them? You know about them because of rugby players. Yeah, the, think it look, is. look up the Mighty Ducks and Ronan O'Gara. <laughs> I just think it's the funniest thing. So some manipulated images of celebrities and politicians, they're often used for our own amusement, but they do pose a much greater risk. We'll be finding out more with technology expert Professor Noel O'Connor in just a little while. Uh, now Alan is in the kitchen. What's on the menu, Alan? Stomach's starting to rumble. Yeah, it's Hello. a bit later this morning, Hello. isn't it? We're normally fed by now. <laughs> Sinead Delahunty is back with us to tell us about you're doing a chicken curry tray bake. Yeah, exactly. So kind of one pan, like really simple ingredients, things that are already in the press at home. So it's really family friendly, very simple recipe. And then so using... So the chicken, the rice, everything goes in and straight into the oven. That's it, into the oven, not much wash up really, really easy to go. And then using lovely seasonal vegetables with our tomatoes and our courgette. Okay, because myself and Tommy now, we're normally fed, as I said, yeah. so by a quarter to Small ten, bit peckish. we'll be getting... Is that we'll one ready digging. to go, Sinead? No, you're not having any of that. Not yet, not That's yet. going into the oven. <laughs> now, Derek is in County Wicklow this morning. Derek, how's weather shaping up today? Well, Al, I hope you enjoyed those two hits from the Art Show of Costume Exhibition we had earlier on. If you missed it, it's going to be online on the player. But, lads, we're getting hit sideways by the rain down here in County Wicklow. And guess what? It's down for the day. I'm getting destroyed. My curls are getting destroyed. Send a raft. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Oh, Derek. It's lovely Fair play to you. Fair oh. play to him. He's back and we're going into winter. It's time now to take a look at this morning's Mixing papers. Up a bit we're this going morning. to start with the Irish Times. It's headline. New plan to control and cut energy use in office buildings. It goes on to say that the government is drawing up a new energy plan which could see the temperatures in offices and buildings lowered this winter. Their front page also shows a picture of Andy Cash, the man charged with murdering three of his siblings. 
Give cheap loans for electric cars to cut emissions. Watchdog urges, that's the front page of the Irish Independent. It's been advised that low-cost loans to buy electric vehicles, congestion charges for urban drivers, and more public transport fare reductions must be introduced to start turning greenhouse gas trends around. The examiner also leads with energy saving measures with the headline heating to be lowered in public offices. It also shows a picture of two young friends supporting one another at a memorial to Lisa Cash and Christy and Chelsea Cawley after Andy Cash was charged with their murders. Both of the tabloids also lead with that news. Andy Cash, the brother of the three siblings killed in Tala, has been charged with their murders. As the mirror goes with brother charged with triple murder. The Sun also goes with that story. Uh, it says siblings murder charge. The Star also has a front page that says triple murder charge. While well, the Herald goes with charge with siblings murders. And finally, windfall tax of energy firms to ease burden is the top story on the Daily Mail. It says that the government is poised to raise revenue from, make, uh, from firms making millions in profits while households struggle with price hikes. And Germany have put in a windfall tax for energy providers. Yes. And I saw someone make the point yesterday online. If they can put in minimum pricing mm -hmm. for alcohol, yes. they can put in maximum pricing for energy yeah. prices, couldn't they? Like they've arbitrarily decided the minimum the prices. Where does the maximum go now? I mean, it looks like they have no idea. Oh, they don't. They don't. But I'm just no, saying, no, if idea. they can do it oh. one way, they can do it the other yeah. way. I don't see why not. Yeah. And, and you were saying, even we were talking about one of the big stories as well is Liz Truss being, becoming the new British Prime Minister. They're in a worse state than those. Some people, they're saying that their energy bills are going to be like thousands. So, 6,000. So they were saying that it had, had average was 2,000. Mm. They then said it at 4,000. And now they're saying 6,000. 6, like, that's just... And the guy Dara from Bonkers, he, he was on uh, Tonight Show last night talking about how actual the providers are being hit with a 1,000% increase. Yeah. And they've only passed on 100% so far. Yes. So where's it, where's going, it to going to go? Uh, there are going to be 45 million people, 18 million families in the UK in fuel poverty by January. You just so love, like, it's, it's obviously such... But it's going to be like here, where we don't fear. have the figures of fuel it's poverty. Fear, but it's, it's not that, I'm just thinking about Liz Truss. Who would want to go into that job? No idea. Don't like, know why seriously. Why. Right like, now. to go into that job for those two years, to go up to an election, which she probably won't win. Because but, of what all the bad news that's going to happen now in the next two years. Cost of living, yeah. you have the energy crisis, and then potentially she could stoke the fight, a trade war with the with EU. the EU. Yeah, but yeah. she's going more and right. Way. But if Angela Rayner came into the Labour Party, I think that would be amazing. I think that uh, she could do a good job. It, the there. problem she's is great. the I people who thing. she's had to kind of uh, butter up to get herself into that position would very much be big, big Brexiteers. So oh, yeah. interesting to see. I mean, Jones even sent in a message with this. Liz Truss as the new British Prime Minister is bad news for Ireland. The protocol has never been high on her radar. I wouldn't be surprised if a frosty relationship is in store with Boris's It was successor. high on her radar. She dismantled it. Yeah, she's she she going to put the legislation yeah, in place to go yeah, to mine the protocol. We're also before. going to be speaking about romance and the, a great <laughs> story about an Irish girl who went 7,000 miles on her first Tinder date. Off to, off to Hawaii. Off to Hawaii. Isn't that I wouldn't amazing? go five, lads, I'm going to be honest. I love this from Kim, speaking about paths to romance. I, I, now, I knew my husband since we were toddlers. Our mums were friends. We left school, we both went our separate ways, and years later, by poor chance, we were both visiting the Taj Mahal in India. Mm -hmm. Randomly bumped into one another, a dinner and a few drinks later, and we promised to stay in touch and to cut a long story short. We're now seven years happily married. There you I go. Love, love that, that. story. The Isn't Taj Mahal. That, the Taj Mahal. That bum. What are you doing here, Jessica? <laughs> I first met my now boyfriend on a blind date. See, this is like Tinder. It's a blind date. Mm -hmm. Both of us had no idea anything about each other. We just trusted our friends. Knew we knew that they were, or they knew what they were doing. We're together nine months now. There you well go. Done. Great to hear. Uh, but would you? I mean, that's what trusted friends. This is Tinder. It's different. Certainly, Peter. My missus grew up next door to me, so I didn't really have to look very far. We're happily married 20 years. Anyway, we're oh, going to ask... Peter, a you are yeah. a man after my we're own heart. We're going to ask Sinead Delahunty on and her story after that because we're in the kitchen next. See you after the break. <laughs> You're very welcome back. Now it's time for a midweek fake away. The whole family can enjoy, or if you're just back from an electric picnic and feeling a little bit sorry for yourself. Ah, <laughs> you're terrible. This is Sinead, a perfect recipe. Sinead Delahunty. <laughs>
Auntie Joyce is now with a chicken curry tray bake. Good this morning. This is just to what you. you need today, Comfort isn't it? Food. She's still recovering from EP. Thankfully, the voice is a little stronger today. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, my curry chicken tray bake is perfect. Okay. Yeah. How was it? It's great. Great Wet. fun. Listen, damp, but no. Damp. Spirits didn't get dampened. <laughs> okay, yeah. very good, very okay. good. Well, listen, this is exactly what you exactly. need to kind of keep so, the comfort food. Like, all the ingredients will be home in the fridge already. So we're just going to make a lovely marinade here of uh, just your curry powder. I'm using some mango chutney. It could be any kind of a chutney mm -hmm. at home, even marmalade will all actually right. work really well. Marmalade into yeah. curry powder. Yes. Trust oh, me on wow. this. I love uh, mango chutney. It's so good. Gorgeous. Yeah, really, really good flavour. So we've got the curry powder, the mango, and then I'm adding in some yogurt. So this is going to be just lovely marinade. Again, yogurt. Is or that kind of just like a, like a Greek yogurt or just a normal natural yogurt? Natural plain okay, yogurt, yeah. Perfect. Now, if you have Greek at home, like, absolutely don't be running out, like, you know, to yeah. get the natural. This doesn't look like it's half enough to cover what we're going to be putting, but it is, isn't it? It is, yeah, okay. absolutely. So it really, really stretches. So it's a really, really good one. Um, and again, like, you know, if you ever see in menus like buttermilk shaken, you know, it's there. Yeah, cause but the, I'd be making. Three times mountains. the size of that, thinking that would need, well, I'd I need it to a cover saucy. it. I love saucy. I love... Yeah, like, I love loads yeah, of yeah, sauce on yeah, it as yeah. well. Yeah, so I'm going to just save a little bit back for just a little oh, drizzle over yeah. the top. Nice. But we're going to pop in the chicken then. So I'm just using chicken thighs, which, you know, are just a really great chicken. Very um, cheap. Again, really affordable. The bone in will keep your chicken much more moist, you know? Oh, the bone's in them. Exactly. So you've got to be oh, careful it? when you're eating it then. So just, exactly, okay. just watch it. Now, you can get boneless ones as well. Yeah. Um, you can get skin on if you want skin on, you know? So loads of options, but a really good one. The meat is really, really tender. Okay. So yeah, just right. like, you okay. know, roast chicken, you know. The, I so love chicken thighs, cook, yeah. You're not even cooking the rice, and this is just going into the this tray like This is the magic. This. So you just shake your rice into your tray. Spread it out. So that's just like, what? Well, yeah, a jar, cup of, cup of rice. Yeah, yeah, like that's, you know, 400 grams. That's going to feed five. Um, and then you just add in your chicken over the top. And again, don't worry, it'll all soften out. And then you're going to be like, oh, that's such a waste now. Go and pour that like down the drain. Ah, no, we're not. Here. Oh, yeah. There you go. Oh, so you're mixing it with a load of water. Now, could exactly. you put cream or something in if you want more creamy Absolutely. or water? Absolutely. Coconut versus... milk. Yeah, you could totally substitute coconut either the yogurt yeah. or the water. Yeah, it still cook milk. the rice okay? It will, once it's, you have the same volume. Yeah, um, exactly. Same volume will work perfect. So just mixing all that through. Add that in. Okay, so that's where your, exactly. all your, your that's liquid where is. Exactly, that's where liquids are coming okay. from. And you have what? You've just courgettes and stuff? So just keeping it really seasonal. You know, again, you're better off eating with the seasons. Um, it's going to be more affordable again. And again, it's nice to just change things up, you know, so you can transform mm. What would you normally have in a chicken curry? Peppers. Peppers. Okay. Peppers would be fine, onions. yeah. Onions, yeah. Would you put on, would, could you do that? Like anything Absolutely. that's in the house. Whatever you, you have. Onions Corgettes. Or peppers. Well, we have tomatoes. Corgettes. Tomatoes. I know tomatoes. that's what I'm saying. Normally, tomato like would be in some kind of a curry, yeah, you know. In, yeah. yeah. So um, just yeah, change it up. Whatever you have really at hand. And then the key thing is it's you're cooking this slow, you know. So the rice is going to take time to oh. absorb up. So it does take 50 minutes in the oven. But it's it's well worth it. And like, do, look, would you cover that, or no, you don't need to? Just in straight like this. Okay. That'll all you know. The water will literally absorb up through. Okay. So At what sort of temperature? One eighty. One eighty. Yeah, okay. for Very fifty. Good. Fifty minutes. Fifty. That minutes. is so simple. I know. Yeah, in fairness. Listen, I tell you, just that back for electric picnic, perfect. <laughs> or if the kids are coming in as well. I mean, they, listen, my kids love a chicken curry. Do they? They all love it. Oh, really? It's mad. I know, they won't eat hardly flavor. anything. But they need a chicken yeah. curry. Yeah. I mean, do you get it from a takeaway or make one? We make one generally, but if we have uh, get a takeaway and they find out we've a chicken curry, they go mental. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, you're off in bed. Um, yeah, no, they love it. It's great. That and spag ball. So, oh, right. oh, yeah. Perfect. So then it comes so out the, like this. So the rice is all cooked and everything. Exactly, yeah. your rice is lovely and fluffy, a little crispy on top, which is nice too. Mm. And then you've got your veg. So like again, it's literally like your roasted tomatoes. Look at that. Your courgette. Andy. Okay. Exactly. Yes, then I'll give that to Tommy. And then a little can... drizzle of the oh. sauce is just nice over the top as well. Oh, that's the sauce that you Yum. made there. Yeah, it's a little leftover. Yeah, throw on loads. Alan doesn't want any of that sauce. <laughs> Now, Pass you can, the parcel. You can, right, let's have a taste. Have a little oh, taste of that. 
we'll so go there's bones in this, so I need to cut bones the bones in, out. So just watch yeah. that, okay. cut around. That is one of the simplest things I think I've seen being made here that I think I could have a go at that. Tonight, that's Al. incredibly doable. Tonight. And you were saying, I was saying I have a roast chicken tonight, and you were saying a little tip for the roast chicken. So I picked this up actually from EP, from Kwang Gi Chan, mm. um, to make your skin really, really crispy. To On the chicken. Massage the skin with salt. And that will like dry out the moisture. So you're going to have you a, get really, a crispy, really crispy skin. Really crispy The top of that is though the crunchiness at the top is really nice. And the, the rice is nice and fluffy. Sinead, exactly. well done. That's class. Pleasure. Well, listen, enjoy everyone now in their Well, I'm waiting on mine. <laughs> oh. I'm waiting on mine. <laughs> All right. Well, now, I'll okay. start Can I have a little bit of the, of the sauce as well? To whip up another little bit for you. Oh, no, it doesn't now. matter. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. <laughs> well, thank you very much, Sinead. Thank, thank you very much for that. Love it. Now, after the break, we're going to meet the Irish girl who flew all the way to Hawaii for a Tinder date. Stay, Stay with, with us. us. <laughs> now, can you imagine flying 7,000 miles? 7,000 for a Tinder date. Well, that is exactly what Dingle native Cloda O'Sullivan did. And Cloda joins us now with that very Tinder date, Brady Elliott, this morning. Hello, Hello guys. It's family. lovely to have you here. Morning. Good this is, you. okay, right, we've got an American fella, a Dingle gal. Yeah. Let me guess, something happened in Dingle. No, no. Nothing happened no, in Dingle? No, no, I wish. Brady spent his 10 days in Ireland, in Dublin, and he decided to do um, a trip to the Cliffs of Moher, and that's why our radius was in the same spot at the same time kind of thing. Because Dingle and the Cliffs of Moher are well, so like, close no, to each like, other. No, but you know, you wouldn't get Dingle in Dublin, you get How me. How wide so... did you have the radius I know, I had only... <laughs> <laughs> I'm not that desperate. <laughs> no, Just... I had only downloaded it and it was like, it was like, it was there. You oh, you know? hadn't like, set I, the yeah, radius I hadn't set it, yeah. on Tinder. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. is it right? It was like, so obviously a swipe right. Yeah. And... An accidental swipe right to Yeah, end? yeah. So Brady, be, be careful what you're saying. No, you know? no. I yeah. mean, look at him. He's so handsome. But Brady's photos, like, they didn't do him any justice. And like, they were blurry. I was like, oh, this looks like a bit of a catfish. No thanks. And then I swiped right back at it, and then he made me laugh. So I was like, okay. <laughs> he made you laugh on. T you made her laugh on Tinder, Brady. Yeah. Like via text. Yeah. Well, I sent like one of those gifts of the office. Oh. She, so I guess she liked the office. So yeah, that I thought it was funny. <laughs> so how long was it before the two of you realised that obviously you're not living in Ireland, Brady? How? Uh... I think it was pretty instant because I think yeah. the, like, the first text I sent her was like, "You want to come to Hawaii?" Yeah, he, he <laughs> was he was, was, he was yeah. in the airport and he had been drinking in the morning and stuff, and he sent it to me and probably. Who know how, like, you know, I don't know how many other girls you want to know. Um, but I, I just thought he was hilarious. And then we kind of kept on talking. But yeah, so we realised pretty instantly. How long is this from the accidental swipe to the invitation in the airport? Four uh, days. It's four days. To now or the... No, 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 no. Like there, originally. Oh, it was four like, days. Yeah, like yeah. Four So days. you hadn't met when you were on holidays in no. Ireland, Brady. No, no. So you asked Cloda mm. to come to Hawaii. And Cloda, when was this? When did you go? I went in November, I landed November 6th, yeah. 2019. 2019, So yeah. pre-COVID. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, before COVID, thank God we wouldn't have, yeah. So you hadn't met, obviously, before that, but, like, modern technology, yeah. you have FaceTime, you have WhatsApp yeah. and that sort of stuff. So I presume you'd done a lot of that before actually getting on a plane. Yeah, no, I mean, my dad was fit to kill me, I'd say. Like, he <sighs> was like, Brady, Brady would be, like, up against the sink when I was doing the dishes. He'd be up against the salt when I was eating dinner. He was like, this guy's just in our house and we don't even know him, kind of thing. <laughs> We'd be FaceTiming non-stop, like. Like, we okay. just non-stop FaceTime for, like, three months straight. Were your parents also freaking out about the possibility of you flying 7,000 miles to meet a fella. Yeah. Did that... you go on your own? Yeah, yeah, no, I did, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. no, my dad... So he actually had a friend who was in the, like, military, so I gave her Brady's ID, Put she put it through to make sure it was he was who he was. I wasn't going there, like, you know, oh, hopefully this will be who he is. Like, I always... I 99% knew, but then there was that 1% chance that it could have gone wrong, but sure, there's that 1% chance that it could go wrong down the road. So, do you know... you got to listen, with, with yeah. risk t comes reward. Uh, Brady, yeah. like, what did your family think with this? Oh, they didn't know. <laughs> they, <laughs> did they, not? <laughs> they, they didn't know until I think she was, like, a week out from coming, and then I said, oh, this... Uh, Your uh, like, sister knew. Oh, yeah. I, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, but it was still, like, pretty soon before you came. Yeah. Like, it wasn't as big of a deal. Yeah. So you just like, said there's a, my, a, a girl like, coming over from Ireland. Yeah. 
Yeah, because so, <laughs> I wasn't going anywhere, so like, I didn't You're like, think I'm I needed I'm to tell anyone. Did you know, because you were you were a Marine, you know, you were... You... Well, in the Navy, it's confusing. <laughs> Sorry, yeah, okay, yeah. yeah, but you were... The fact, did you know that Claudia was doing background checks on you before she came over to she, check your military ID? Yeah, she told me. Yeah, and I, how... I had to tell him just in case his boss got called or something, you know. To be like someone's... <laughs> but what did you make of that? Well, I was just more worried about the guys figuring out and making fun of me. <laughs> so, then you were being checked off. So, so listen, it's worked out amazing. I mean, yeah. the two of you are yeah. a couple now. You've moved to Dingle. How yeah. are you finding that? It's really, really cool. Because, like, uh, so I, I do music now pretty much full time. And so I've got a lot of, like, inspiration there to write. Because so, I just, like, I just released uh, my single now. Oh. On Spotify Mermaids, just if anyone <laughs> Under what's the name? Uh, Mermaids on Mermaids. Brady yeah. Elliott, okay. yep. Wow. And there's another one coming out Friday. But, um, yeah, so Dingle is really, really... It, just it really worked for me just because I like being relaxed and and your family and have come over as well. As well. Like, yeah, it's, it's a very, very musical artsy town. town, you know. Of course, yeah. yeah. Other voices and everything. And yeah. you are, if people have been in Foxy John's this summer, yeah, they've probably you've heard, you've probably yeah. seen you. <laughs> and they didn't know that there was this whole story behind it. Yeah. <laughs> so the love, like your love developed that first trip to Hawaii. Yeah. And then what did you just, because coronavirus happened. Yeah. So yeah. what happened then? So Brady, well, I was yeah. gone. Brady so. got deployed and then I, because my plan that year was to travel anyway. So like Hawaii, it was a big deal, but it was it was in the cards for me to travel that year anyway. So I went to Thailand before it hit. And then, um, yeah, his your deployment got extended. How long? Like four months. It was supposed to be like three or four and then it ended up being seven. Yeah. So. Right, yeah. So, but. yeah, we were apart for seven months and then he flew to Ireland, luckily, because Ireland didn't have rules at the time for people to yeah. come in. Yeah. So he got there just in time. I think a week later it changed. So yeah. when you got in just then and you yeah. moved in, essentially. Yeah. yeah. And then things progress. <laughs> can we get, and can then we get, all of a sudden, we, little baby Jamie see how turns up. Yes. <laughs> yes. Come on. How things have progressed. I mean, this is a, a, a Tinder story, a positive. I think it's a 10 years of Tinder. This is definitely <laughs> one of their most positive stories. Oh, he's ready to go. So Say here we go. Hello. Hello, little <laughs> Jamie. Little baby Jamie's gorgeous. Lads, you have a Tinder baby. What's that like? <laughs> You say hello. No, you no, want to no. crawl. Oh, no, he wants oh. to go. Come hi. on over here. Do you want to yeah. go say hi? Like, in all fairness, <laughs> I'm assuming that everyone, when they hear this story, Cloda, <laughs> he'll be. That they're. Where are Tommy's you got to? him. Tommy's got him. <laughs> when everyone hears that story, are they like, ah, come on now, lads, is this real? Yeah, yeah. Do you know what? It happened three years ago. At the start, we were Watch very your like. Head. What's going on? <laughs> Come here, mister. At the start, we were very like, um, Joe, it was, at the start, it was big, but like, it's been three years. Oh, no. <laughs> we want to go walking. We go walking. Want to go crawling again, don't you? Come on, we'll go walking. He's good. Every Has everyone day. been delighted? Listen, he's walking. on television. This is his moment. You thought your singing was going to get a, a mention. Well, I, I mean, listen, you must be so excited. So the plans now, you're in Dingle, you're obviously getting involved in music. Yeah. And have your family been over to visit? Yeah, they've been twice. They came right after <laughs> Homeboy was born, and then... Um, <laughs> And then they Jamie. just came. When did they come last time? For, for his christening oh, in for May. His christening, yeah. yeah. In May. And, and they, they got to come to Fail yeah. of Yalshna, which was mad. Do you know? Oh, yeah. The pig oh, wow. and everything. It's unreal. To know what was going on. I got, I got it. Well, you got him. You got him. He's only 13 months old. He's like yeah. an 18 month old. Yeah. yeah. He, he's he keep, a big boy. And he keeps you on your toes, doesn't he? Back he does. This way. Yeah. Oh my gosh, he does. <laughs> Lads. Come on, mister. <laughs> what do the family make of all this? Like, you're getting on great in Dingle. Yeah. Like, now that you're a real life person, does, is, your dad, <laughs> is your dad delighted he's off the phone and not always at the same Yeah. And he loves Brady as well. Like it's hard to get oh, dad to <laughs> it's hard to get dad to like the one, but he he took a liking to Brady very quickly. <laughs> and uh, tell me, so with, this is a real success story. Yeah. Uh, like for people looking for love, is it worth it's worth the risk? Oh yeah, it's definitely it is, worth it. It is, yeah. You gotta be safe about it though, especially online. Like I Absolutely. definitely I'd never be like, yeah, go do what I did and you know, I did do a lot of research yeah. too, and I made sure. It was okay. Because you know? we do hear a lot about catfishing. Yeah, and we do exactly. hear about scams and yeah. whatever else. But I believe you were asking Brady for his passport <laughs> details, bank details, the oh, whole lot. Oh, I got lot. everything. Not the bank details now, but everything. <laughs> <laughs> Where are you off to, little man? <laughs>
It's <laughs> Jamie's He's adventurous back anyway, years. just like his parents. Yeah. <laughs> I hope, by the way, Brady <laughs> Elliott, Mermaids, you've yeah. got that out, and there's a new single coming out. You'll probably be around, hopefully, for other voices. Yeah. Like, you're in such a great place for doing yeah. your music. And your family is so... Cloda, I mean, <laughs> what an inspiration doing all this. It has been a pleasure talking to you. And Thanks, you. guys. Thanks Thank so, so much for coming in. Thank you, thank you, thank you, and he's off. Do you know what? Oh, right, here Come we go. On. We're just going to mind the baby. We'll be back with you in Ireland AM in just a minute. Hello, <laughs> <laughs> bye. <laughs> <laughs> now, from politicians singing to celebrities falling over, the trend of deepfake videos is running rampant. Now, we're going to be discussing them with Professor Noel O'Connor, but first, here's an example. Now, all of these are fake, but the, this is what a deepfake is. Or are they? Stop it. I'm Jim Eskimen, and I wrote a poem about what it feels like to be an impressionist. Is anything more sad and lame contemptible, beneath disdain, in short, provoking of disgust than being an impressionist. A third-rate, even fourth-rate skill. The definition of cheap thrill. Like watching farm equipment rust is watching an impressionist. Relic from a distant day that long since should have died away, dishonorably mentioned is. The pitiful impressionist. That ending with George Same. Clooney there. It's that is Professor Noel O'Connor. Hi, how are you? Good, thank you. It's really freaky looking at stuff. The way it changes so quickly. What exactly is a deep fake, right? A deep fake is effectively a digital forgery. So it takes your likeness and pastes it onto someone else's body, so that you appear as someone different, uh, doing things or saying things that you would you would never do. And, and how? Are they created and how easily are they created? They're created by having access to people's uh, images, effectively, images or videos. In terms of how easy or difficult they are to create, it depends. Um, you know, uh, images are, are easier than ever before. Uh, this is, if you like, a, a, an outgrowth of, of Photoshop, which has been used for years to manipulate digital photographs, right? What AI has done is made it easier for people to do that, so you can almost do it with a click of a button. Videos, on the other hand, like the videos we've just mm -hmm. seen there, are much more difficult. They require special computation platforms, mm -hmm. a lot of manual editing, and sometimes even human actors to make it really, really, well, really... What about really the weird. voice? Yeah, how do they do the voice so well? So it's, it's synthesising the voice based on examples of what that person sounds like uh, and creating new speech, but that which that person mm. never actually said. Wow. So there's one thing kind of, you know, looking at what the Kardashians have done and monetized the photoshopping of their life, which is, mm -hmm. you know, photoshopping themselves into skinniness beyond belief. Now with these deep fakes, you might be sitting here going, well, there's funny ones online. I've seen one with the Irish rugby team. This is all gas or, you know, Tom Cruise. We've showed that video earlier on. This isn't about people that are very far, far away. This is coming closer and closer to home every day, Noel. Yeah, absolutely. And I suppose, you know, it's worth remembering that no technology is inherently good or, or, or evil. It's, it's how it's used. And, and this technology has its roots in exactly those types of things you're talking about, online filters, a bit of crack online. But unfortunately, it can be used for more sinister purposes as well. It can be used, you know, to create pornographic videos of celebrities, for example. It could be used to make politicians say things they would never otherwise say, feeding disinformation. It's even been used by scammers to scam corporations out of funds by impersonating to see CEO, for example. Wow. So it, it's a growing, it's a growing public concern, and we need a very strong uh, response to it. So, what are social media companies and technology companies do? Is there regulation on it? Well, the good news is there is regulation on it. Uh, the uh, har Harassment, um, Harmful Communications and Related Offences Act was enacted a couple of years ago in Ireland, and it makes this illegal to create or disseminate deep fakes. And there's already a number of cases being prosecuted under that act. Okay. There's also a lot of research going on to detect. Um, deep fakes, you know, by analysing the images. Now, detection obviously is after the fact. What you actually want to do is try and prevent them creating deep fakes. So there's a lot of work going on how you can embed secret codes in images that effectively make it impossible to create a deep fake from an image like or, an or a video. Like an NFT sort of a exactly, thing. Exactly, exactly, yeah. Um, uh, and there's also a requirement then on the big social media platform providers to be very vigilant of this, to make sure that they're, it's patrolled on their platforms and taken down as soon as it's reported. One thing that it appears there is a rise for everyday people who are going into their lives, maybe searching at jobs, is the rise of something like revenge porn, whereby a, a, a woman or a man who just has, has a picture online, you know, they're, they're on a holidays and they're in yeah. their swimming togs or whatever, and that can be then turned into a pornographic image. This is something that is happening to people. 
Yeah, absolutely. And can you imagine how, how devastating that is for, for anyone who's caught up in that or for their, for their family, yeah. right? Uh, it's disgusting. It, it, it's, 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 it's against the law. Um, uh, I suppose the, 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 real, the real challenge is how do we ensure that, how do we protect ourselves online that this doesn't actually happen or the chances of it happening are minimised, right? Um, and that really comes down to you know, um, um, practicing good, safe uh, etiquette online, effectively. Um, no one's immune from it. That, that's the reality. Um, so we just need to be hyper vigilant online and what we do with our personal data. Yeah. So how could you protect an image of you being transformed? You know, whether it's for something, having a laugh, but you don't like it, or it is something more sinister, like you're talking about, Moran. There's, there's no easy solution, unfortunately, because in this right. day and age, you know, no one expects you not to have images online, uh -huh. right? Um, but the, there are common sense things that you can do, which is like restrict your posts. You know, you don't necessarily need hundreds of images for every event in your life out there. Uh, keep Sorry, your... what? I don't understand. What, what does that mean? <laughs> <laughs> well, it, it, it's a reality. And by the way, this also it makes you more vulnerable to cyber crime as well yeah. by having your license out, like your likeness out there. You know, it's about keeping your your communication channels private wherever possible, never interacting with anybody that you don't know online um, and just being extremely, extremely vigilant. Um, in the context of deep fake videos, you know, we have to get into the mindset of questioning everything that we see and hear online. And isn't that just exhausting? Like, isn't that what we're in a state where everything is going to be questioned? So you've got a political leader saying one thing and then there's going to be a deep fake video of them saying something completely different. So you never know. Yeah. What's well, real? And that's where we live already in the internet where there's so much conspiracy. This is this we're already there, right? Yeah. I mean, how do you believe what you read? How do you believe what's coming from particular broadcasters? There's hidden agendas and so on and so forth. So it, this is just the next generation, the next level of hypervigilance that we need in terms of information dissemination. So for a deep fake, is there anything you can look out for? Is there any way of kind of half being able to detect detect whether that's real or not? Yeah, absolutely, um, particularly for, for videos. So you can see this here, they're swapping the faces of Danny yeah. DeVito and um, Arnold Schwarzenegger there in Twins. Look yeah. at that. Like, people have a lot but of time on their be, hands, don't they? You wouldn't tell that one. You wouldn't be able to tell that one. It I depends so. on how much manual editing has gone into it and how much effort has gone into it. Um, I mean, you, you can look for things like, you know, artifacts around the face, poor synchronization between the lips and the audio, uh, unusual blinking patterns, changes in tone or texture um, uh, of, uh, of a person's skin color, for example. Okay. Um, but again, if someone's going to put two months uh, of manual labor with a, 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 a body double into creating a deep fake, it's going to be very hard to, to, to differentiate that from reality. And th that was actually happened with Tom Cruise on, on TikTok, where deep fakes of Tom Cruise were viewed 11 million times because people thought it was the real, but well, people couldn't decide whether it was yes. the real Tom Cruise or a fake Tom Cruise on, on this TikTok. This was it. It took him two months to do this. this yes. Imperson yeah. Yeah. He's an impersonator of Tom Cruise. Yeah. And he did this. It, it was fascinating. Yes. What Shall happened we, there? Do, shall we look at the rugby ones? Yeah. See, no. the thing is, we're telling everyone to be like, be careful. Oh my God, these are terrible. And then there's the rugby ones that we're doing the rounds that are so, oh, funny. so funny. Do we have a look? Go on, we let's have take them? a look. Uh, you can decide, is this a deep fake or not? <laughs> Roman O'Gara and O'Driscoll, let's have a look. We're not goons, we're not bullies. No matter what people say or do, we have to be ourselves. Yo, who are you? Dean Portman, from where? Chicago, Illinois. You, Guy Ryan O'Driscoll from Dublin. Um, uh... Okay, thanks, Draco. Yeah, who made that? that? It was so good. So that was the that. Mighty Ducks, obviously. <laughs> obviously. I mean, some of them are funny. Some of them are funny. But, but of course, it's that sinister side. Were you meant to be in one and you got cut out? Yeah, what happens if I don't want to be in it? That's tough luck. Tough luck. Is it? <laughs> Pretty is much, mad? yeah. Pretty much. Oh, lads, <laughs> yeah, it's not good. It is frightening, all right. Um, listen, uh, Noel, thank you so much for coming in and talking to pleasure, us again. Frightening the life out of us again. <laughs> Professor in the School of Electronic Engineering at DCU, Noel O'Connor. Brilliant. Thank you so much. <laughs> Brian O'Driscoll from Dublin. Uh, now, Alan, Alan. <laughs> Tell us Alan, more. Alan from Dublin also. <laughs> Alan from Dublin over here. Uh, join us tomorrow on the show. We're going to have ex EastEnders star Adam Woodyatt chatting about 35 years playing soap legend Ian Beale. Writer and broadcaster Florence uh, Given will be on to talk about her debut novel. And we have the guide to car finance, calzones on the menu and lots more. Join us from 7 here in Ireland AM. We'll see you tomorrow. Have a great day.